Our first speaker is um, Francoise Boivet, the NDP member of parliament. Please welcome Francoise Boivet. Bonjour. Hey. When we live moments like this one, like you're just re-energizing us. It's so important to feel that because believe you me, Last week, when we, after having to fill a bus just to have the right to argue C10, Shame. it is shameful. It is very shameful. After, after having to tire the government to say, we want to debate clause by clause, we want to argue, we want to show you what the witnesses that were treated rudely Never seen witnesses treated like this in my life, either as a lawyer, as an activist, or as a politician. To come and have five minutes, to have Ms. Pate, who's the Governor General Award this year for Woman of the Year, uh, being cut after five minutes in mid-sentence, this is not democracy. So we were time limited in the house but they said hey listen you're going in committee you can debate all you want over there not true because time limitations over there also number of witnesses that could be heard because you know what we've been dealing with that for so many years there's reports filling rooms in the parliament on c10 but guess what c10 is a new bill C-10 is nine bills included in one. It's an omnibus bill. Shame. And again, just there to divide people. It's, it's, it's a constant battle. It's a constant battle just to be able to voice our opinion. Imagine in this House of Commons. It's not House of Commons no more. It's a house of the privileged. Of the people who know the big lobbies of this country. And when I got elected, I'm sorry, on the 2nd of May, I didn't get elected to represent the Bank of Canada or any banks. I got, I got elected to represent everybody. But right now, in the parliamentary system, as we are living it, it's very hard to have faith, honestly. But we need you, the people, to help us in that fight. And I've been saying, every time I meet, I mean, I've been on these steps when Sisters in Spirit were here, when we have people coming to show that there's nothing happening with all these women who are murdered throughout that country, when we have the, the homelessness, when we have all these great cause and nothing is happening. Shame. It is shame. shame. It is shameful. But we have to find ways to make them listen. And I think if I can leave you with one thing, it's going to be the same cons It's the same message I'm going to give to everybody. We have to use our intelligence. And believe you me, we're much more intelligent than they are. Except right now, we fight. Right now, we're fighting so many battles at the same time that they divide to conquer and they think they're winning that, that war. Well, let's say no. Let's maybe change our, 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 our way of, of activism to really be united. Let not let aside our cause, our personal cause, but let's unite in one cause, one cause only. Democracy for Canada. Thank you. Bonjour, Sable, Cray Cray, and welcome. I am Michelle Penny and I do work at the courthouse over on uh, 161 Elgin Street and uh, today I'm coming to give a few facts to you about what it's like in the job that I do over at the courthouse. As an Aboriginal uh, criminal court support worker, I deal with these people every day. I deal with the homeless, I deal with violence against women, I deal with the marginalized community. I go out to the jails and I do... I do programming with another co-worker of mine and I can assure you the conditions within the jail system are not the best. 
they are continually um, marginalized in the sense that when they get out of jail, they now have a criminal record. Who's going to hire a criminal? Because of all the police checks that people need and, and the length of time it takes to get a pardon, there just seems to be no um, resources available to them. As a frontline worker working with these people, my job is to try and get them back into society as people like you and myself. This bill, I don't agree with at all. It's going to affect our programming. It could take away some a lot of our services, and we try to service everyone that we can. And this country is not going to be any the better for this bill. I'd just like to say uh, thank you for the opportunity to be able to stand here and say what I'm saying. I'm not a politician. I'm not an elder. I'm not a shaman. I'm, I, I'm just a frontline worker that works in this. Thank you. Thank you. Our dear friend Henrik is going to come up now and sing us a song just to uh, give us a uh, some nice light entertainment. Do you believe in a love at first sight? Yes, I'm certain that it happens all the time. What do you see when you turn off the lights? I can't tell you, but I know it's mine. Ooh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Ooh, I get high with a little help from my friends. Ooh, I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends, with a little help from my friends. Yeah! Yeah, okay. So our, our next speaker, um, Catherine Latimer, is the executive director of the John Howard Society, which seeks to understand and respond to problems of crime and, and the criminal justice system. Good day, everybody. I am very proud to be with all of you today. All of you who are seeking... Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? What's he been charged with? What's the charge? What is the charge? What is he being charged with? What is he charged with? He has a right to know what the charge is. He did not agree to terms and conditions of his arrest. Folks, he didn't sign anything. 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 This happens every fucking day. So are you going to arrest me too then? What has he been charged with? What is the charge? Pardon me? It's none of our concern because it's not a valid charge. He's not breaching his terms. Maybe he'll get off if he decides to be a rat. There's no terms or conditions. Thank you, Kim. Our shirt! Where are they going? I am very proud to be with all of you today who are seeking a fairer and more just and more democratic society. I just want to say that there have been very thorough analysis done of the legal provisions in Bill C-10. And when 37,000 members of the Canadian Bar Association tell you that it's not good law, I think we should all listen to that. And the Canadian, and the Canadian Civil Liberties Association tells us it's not good law and violates rights. I think we should listen to that. The other major criticism of the bill are, is in relation to fairness issues. This bill is not going to be fair in the way it's carried out and in its result. 